The Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number six from the June 2019 Edexcel exam, um, the C3, the old C3 um, specification. And this question is related very much to P3. One of the students has asked me to answer this question because it has some strange type of algebraic manipulation in it. And so I'm going to go through this question and show you how to deal with such types of problems. So first of all, you have this graph, which is drawn for us. And it says figure one shows the sketch or a sketch of part of the curve with equation y equals f of x, where f of x is equal to, in brackets, x squared minus x minus 12 times a lin of x plus 3, where x is an element of the real number. So the domain of this is all real numbers, um, but x is greater than negative 3. Okay, so the obviously it's from here. That should that most probably will be negative three. So x is greater than negative three. So there's nothing that exists on this side of the graph. Okay, so that's something maybe that might come in later on useful. That part here, x is greater than negative three. That's the domain. All right. So first of all, it says find f dash of x. So we have to differentiate this expression. Okay, that's the first thing we have to do. Now to find f dash of x, we have a function multiplied by a separate function. So we're going to use a product rule. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to call um, one of the products u. So I'll say u is equal to x squared minus x minus 12. I can see this can be factorized, but keeping it in this form while we differentiate it will be easier, I think. And we have v equals the lin of x plus 3. Now when I differentiate this, I get 2x minus 1. And when I differentiate v, I get 1 over x plus 3 times 1, right? The inside you, 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 the lin of something, you put 1 over that thing when you differentiate it, and then you multiply by the differential force inside the function here. Differential x plus 3 is just 1 anyway. Now, I see I can multiply this by this. I always like to go this way rather than that way first, because the product rule and the quotient rule, I like to use the same order. Otherwise, um, for the quotient, for the quotient rule, it does matter the, the order, and it has to be this way for the quotient rule because there's a subtraction. So I like to always go this way, so I don't kind of have to do different things. So here I'm going to multiply these two together. So that's going to be two x minus one times the lin of x plus three, and plus, and then I multiply these two together. Now what I notice is is x squared minus x minus twelve can be factorized. I have x and x plus and minus, and it's going to be minus 4 and plus 3, right? That will give you the same as x squared minus 4x plus 3x minus 12. So I'm going to write this now when I multiply this in factorized form. That's going to be x plus 3 times x minus 4. And when I multiply with this, it'll be over x plus 3. And you see, the reason I did this is because these will now cancel out. So this is dy dx or we can call it f dash of x. Okay, same thing, but we'll use this notation as they used it. Don't get confused. This does not mean inverse. Inverse is when it has a minus 1 of x. This is inverse. All right, now a lot of people ask, you know, how do we know if it's inverse or, or differential? Well, it's very clear. This is not inverse. Inverse is when it says to the power of minus 1. They're not the same, so don't get confused. All right, so now... Um, and we end up, therefore, with f dash of x equals 2x minus 1 times the lin of x plus 3 plus x minus 4. Okay, so there is f dash of x. So there's the answer to part A. Then it says the curve has a minimum turning point at A. So there's a minimum turning point at A here. It says show that the x coordinate of A is a solution to this equation given here. Okay, so now, um, what we're going to do is, we're going to take our answer. We know that the turning point is when the gradient is equal to zero. Okay, at, the, at A, so at A, f dash of x must equal zero. We know that, right? That's when the, the gradient is zero, because this is a gradient function. So at the gradient function, when the gradient function is zero, we have to equate this to zero. So we have 2x minus 1 times the lin of x plus 3 plus x minus 4 
equals zero. So what we have to do here is we have to kind of study this a little bit first and try to decide which of these x's have they made the subject. Well, it can't be this x here, okay? Because they've made they've made one of the x's the subject. It's not really fully the subject, but this is um, going to be leading to I think an iteration formula where you do have x in the answer as well as a subject. So here, obviously, it's not this x that's made the subject because then you would have had minus four minus or you'd have had basically four minus all of this. Okay, here you have a fraction. And of course, it's not this x that's been made the subject, because then you would have ended up with e to the power of something, because it's trapped inside the lin. So it must be this x that's been made the subject. So I'm going to focus on how we're going to make this x the subject. So you have to first identify what of the which one of these x's has been made the subject. So obviously, it's this x here. Now, this x is trapped inside this bracket, which is multiplying this. So in order to free it, I'm going to expand this bracket first. So I have 2x times the lin of x plus 3 minus 1 times the lin of x plus 3 plus x minus 4 equals 0. Okay, so now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to think about see, if I put all of this on this side then I'm going to have the, the, this x on top here. So what I'm going to do first, I'll leave this x at this side. So I have 2x times the lin of x plus 3 plus x equals, if I add lin x plus 3 to both sides and add 4 to both sides, so far that's looking good. That's looking exactly what we want there. And now I can see what's going to happen next. I can see that this x is common in both of these terms. And I want to have something like 2 times lin x plus 3 plus 1. So if I take this x out of this as a common factor, I've got exactly that inside this bracket. 2 times lin of x plus 3 and then plus 1. And that's equal to the lin of x plus 3 plus 4. And then it's simply a case of dividing both sides by this. So I end up with lin of x plus 3 plus 4 all divided by 2 lin of x plus 3 plus 1. And that is our answer. That is our answer. Okay, so that's exactly what we had to show. All right, so the, the key in such a question as this is to try to figure out which one of these x's from here has been made into the subject of the formula. And you can eliminate this for straight away because you'll have to have end up with e to the power of something when you release this from the lin. And this, of course, it can't be this because you'll just end up with all of these on the other side. So it must be this x that was made the subject. Okay, but at first sight, when you get it like this and you subtract, if you wanted to put this x over there as well, then you'll see it's not the same. So you have to think a bit more carefully. So this is something which some students do have problems with, but... You have to just think a bit clearly of these such, such type of questions. So there's part B. Now we're going to go on to part C. Now part C says use the iteration formula xn plus 1 equals the lin of xn plus 3 outside the bracket plus 4 over 2 lin of xn plus 3 plus 1 with x0 equals 1 to find the values of x1, x2, x3 giving your answers to three decimal places. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, we're going to find x1 by replacing, instead of x, x0, okay, which is equal to 1. So you're going to have the lin of 1 plus 3 and then plus 4 over 2 times the lin of 1 plus 3 plus 1. Okay, now, I'm going to use a calculator to do this. And there's a little trick with the calculator that you should know in this topic. And that is, you can set it up so that you can just, you don't have to keep typing up the new values in all the time. So what you, the way you do it, you take the value that you have to first put in, which is 1 in this case. So I'm going to press 1, and then you press equals. Now, this is now the answer in your calculator. So if you, if you, you know, use the answer button, what it's referring to is this answer 1. So what we can do here now is we can set this up, and we set it up, instead of xn, we just put answer, right? So here we're going to put a fraction. I'll have lin 
of answer plus three, close the bracket, and then plus four over two lin of answer plus three, close bracket, plus one. Now that's going to put one in the place of answer. Why? Because we put one equals in the beginning. So that is our answer. So when I press equals, it gives me a value. Okay, and we have to write the value to three decimal places. Okay, so let's see what it gives us. It's just 1.42774. 1.42774 goes on. So this is going to be to three decimal places, 1.428. 1.428. Okay, that's X1. And for X2, we don't actually have to write this whole process again, but basically we have to put in X1 into here to find what X2 is. But because of what we just did here, this is now the new answer. So when I press equals again, it's going to do the same calculation, but not with one in there, but with this value in there. So all I have to do now to find the value of x2 is press equals again. That gives me 1.38033. So this is 1.38033. So therefore we can say x2 is equal to 1.380 to three decimal places. We have to write the zero there to show that we rounded to three decimal places. And similarly, for x3, we can do the same thing exactly. I just have to press equals again, because now when I press equals, this is a new answer, and it, and it puts, instead of answer, this, which is x2, and that's what's going to give us x3. So press equals, and it gives us 1.38512. So that's 1.38512. Three decimal places, x3 is 1.385. Let's just make sure I didn't... That's right, 1.385. So there's the answers for x3, 2, and x3. So you've got x1, x2, x3. And the more you continue on pressing equals, by the way, the closer you get to the actual answer, the root. So if I keep pressing equals, this thing will settle down. We don't have to do this here, but just to show you, the more you press, it ends up settling down at a particular value, and that's kind of like, you know, it settles down at the root the, the, the solution to the equation, okay, which would be the turning point in this case. So a different curve with the equation y equals 2 times f of x plus k, where k is a constant, passes through the origin. Find the exact value of k. So this is the function f of x, okay, that we were given. This is the equation for the, 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 grade, the uh, curve. Now, if we notice all of these transformations that's taken place in f of x, are all vertical transformations. You've got a stretch, and you've got something that you add or subtract. So they're all vertical. So this point here is only going to be moving vertically, not horizontally. Okay, so the y-intercept, this point here, is going to end up going through the origin after this transformation. We want to find what value of k will cause this to end up being going through there. Right, so we've got two things happening here. We have a vertical stretch okay which is going to be two times two times f of x and then you have a, a vertical translation which is going to be basically um zero k and we want to find what that value of k is so let's look. first we need to find the coordinates of this y intercept. So I'm going to call this C. So we can say C is going to be given by when you replace zero in the function f, because when x equals zero, we'll get the y intercept. That's in our in, in this is in f of x. In f of x, okay? Not in in f of x. So f zero is going to be given by you have 0 squared minus 0 minus 12. That's minus 12 times the lin of 3. Minus 12 lin 3. That's the exact value here. And it says find the exact value of k. So I'll keep this as an exact value. So this is minus 12 lin 3. Now, under the transformation to f of x. Okay, so the point, the point okay, that I've called c, the y-intercept, 
is 0 minus 12 lin 3. So what happens under the transformation 2f of x? What happens under 2f of x? Well, this gets multiplied by 2. So this becomes 0 and negative 24 lin 3. So we want to also have 2f of x plus k such that this becomes 0, 0. All right, we want it to become 0, 0. Okay, so how does this become 0? Well, you have to add 24 lin 3 to this to become 0. That means our k must equal 24 lin 3. And there's the answer to that question. Okay, simple transformations question there. And that concludes this question. I think that was it. Yeah, that's question number six from this paper, June 2019, C3. Um, other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this section here at the end of the video. Other questions from the topics of differentiation you'll find in this playlist. Questions to do with numerical methods and iteration in this playlist. And also I'll put some questions to do with uh, the playlist to do with transformations of functions in this playlist over here. And, uh, you know, if you'd like to watch a video which takes you to, um, you know, teaches you how to use my channel in an efficient manner, you'll see that the card pops up somewhere at the top here towards the beginning of the video. Thank you for watching and see you soon.